Wish is back in modern Lotus Breach. If you're unfamiliar with this deck, you want to combine Lotus Field and Underworld Breach for easy deterministic wins. Let's go check out the full deck list. This is Modern Lotus Breach, and if you're unfamiliar with this deck, the idea is that you want to find your Lotus Field. In order to do that, we have Wishclaw Talisman, as well as tons of cantrips like Consider, Preordain, Mishra's Bobble, and then even Otherworldly Gaze to fill our graveyard and dig extra deep for that Lotus Field. After you have the Lotus Field, you want to play Underworld Breach. You can then use Twiddle and Dream's Grip to untap the Lotus Field over and over, and maybe use another Wishclaw Talisman or even the card Wish to go grab Tome Scour out of the sideboard or the one in the main deck. From there, you have a deterministic loop. Tome Scour, you cast it twice, you mill 10 cards, and then one Twiddle. So if you were to escape, all three of these cards would be nine cards. So every loop that you do, you gain one card in the graveyard. Eventually, you cast Wish again, and then you get the sideboard Thassa's Oracle to win the game. We're now playing Thassa's Oracle because it allows you to win through the one ring. In the past, we played Grape Shot. So that is one avenue to victory. Another avenue to victory, and the reason we're playing Wish again today, is that you can have Lotus Field and then two copies of Twiddle. You need 10 cards in your graveyard. So from that point, you play Wish. You grab the sideboard copy of Underworld Breach. You cast your Twiddle twice. Okay, so now you're going up to six mana. You play Wish again, and then you Tome Scour, and then you Twiddle again after that, and you have the Deterministic win. So this deck now has multiple avenues to getting that Underworld Breach combo and efficiently winning the game. So in my opinion, what changed? So I had played the popular Lotus Field deck right now that is a Teamer version that's running green for Sylvan Scrying and main deck Besaju's. Uh, I've played that one that has the one ring in it, and I've played it quite a bit. I don't like it. It feels extra clunky to me, and it feels like you're trying to be a bad control deck instead of just the combo deck that you are. So this is going to be a little bit longer of a deck tech, bear with me. And I never really enjoyed it, but the one thing I did like in that deck was Is It Charm, because it kills Dothy Voidwalker. On top of that, it kills Megas of the Moon, it fills your graveyard for Underworld Breach, it did a lot. And then those decks went and cut the one thing I liked about it. So uh, I'm not a big fan of that. They're playing Lightning Bolts instead, and I understand Lightning Bolt is great at, you know, um, killing Magus the Moon and Dothy Voidwalkers. But the fact that this fills your graveyard for the 10-card Wish line that you need, because you do need 10 cards in your graveyard, and Is It Charm provides three of them. So if you were to play a turn one Otherworldly Gaze, turn two Is It Charm, and then play your Lotus Field on turn three, you're practically there for Wish. And I really do like that quite a bit. So that's one th reason why I'm playing it again. And uh, another reason why is I was getting kind of sick of playing the utility cards in the main deck, the Grape Shot, the Void Snare, all that stuff. And when you play Wish, you, they can all live in the sideboard in game one situations. And I do value that. So in order to play Wish Claw Talisman, because a lot of those decks aren't playing it anymore, they're choosing to play green. I'm playing a Blood Crypt today, which might not be a popular decision, but in my head, it makes a lot of sense. So we're a deck with Consider, Preordain, Otherworldly Gaze. Why would we want to play this land? I get it. It doesn't tap for blue. However, what it does do is it allows you to fetch for your basic island. And then on turn two, you can search out Blood Crypt, play Wishclaw Talisman, and you still have red mana available to Is It Charm a Dothy Voidwalker or play or flow a blue and a red, play Lotus Field, twiddle your Lotus Field, and then play Underworld Breach. So this land really does help us accomplish quite a bit. And on top of that, it's a second red source. It's a second black source. I think it actually does quite a bit for us. It's another mountain in our deck for mind collapse out of the sideboard that you can cast off of Wish. I just think that this card makes a lot of sense to me. Previously, I was only playing 18 lands anyway, so I went up one land in order to play this here today. So that's really my main deck changes in the sideboard. It's a pretty stock sideboard. A lot of people aren't playing Leyline of Sanctity anymore, but it stops Endurance. It stops those scam grief openings. I think it just makes a lot of sense. So that's my deck tech. And now I'm going to make a quick announcement. If you didn't watch my Pioneer Lotus video, you wouldn't have known this, 
but our channel is now sponsored by KMC Sleeves. I'm so excited to work with them. My entire collection for years has been in KMC Hard Perfect Fits, and now I get to work directly with them, and it's just such an exciting opportunity. So thank you to everyone over there. And if you're interested throughout this video, you'll see an ad in above me that says Storm 10 at checkout for 10% off. That is true. Save yourself some money. Go to KMC Sleeves and just get some high quality products. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now without any further ado, let's head on into the first match. I know that I'm going to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsforum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsforum.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Match number one. We're on the draw and what I love about this hand is that we're a single wish away from greatness. We find a wish and we have a turn three win. So we're going to try to do that. All right. So our opponent leads on Scalding Tarn, Mishra's Bobble. They are likely on Is It Merc Tide if I had to take a wild guess here. One quick thing is I bought a brand new computer yesterday that I will be recording from soon. I still have some setup to do. But I was trying to set up Streamlabs OBS on that machine and I accidentally deleted because it didn't look good when I exported and imported to a new computer. So I decided to delete it. I didn't realize that the two are connected, my current machine and my new one. And I accidentally deleted my overlay from, you know, the one that I'm actively using. So that was a little bit of a bummer. And I'm going to play the Blood Crypt. So I had to rebuild it all from scratch. So you might notice that the bar below me is a slightly different red than the, ooh, KMC above me, uh, than the logo that you'll see eventually throughout this video. They're just slightly different. And I wanted to call that out because it's not an accident. I am in the middle of coding a brand new epicstorm.com that is fully accessible. And if you're unfamiliar with accessibility on the internet, uh, basically, a TLDR for you is at the beginning of 2020, Dunkin' Donuts and Little Caesars were sued because their websites were not accessible. They were not good for people with, you know, visual disabilities or visual impairments. So there's a there's a practice made because really the internet is a tool for everyone, and there was a practice made that basically the internet needs to be usable for everyone. So your images need to have alt text. Uh, color ratios have to abide by certain things, uh, certain contrast ratios, that is. It's what I do for work, actually, and because I'm a web developer. They spell pierce my wish claw talisman. And, but there's tons of other things, like when you hover over a button, it needs to tell you what it does. It can't just be the text on the button. There's code that goes with it. So the epicsroom.com is going to be fully accessible uh, in multiple different ways, and it's going to receive a full facelift. In the past, I've given it a couple like makeovers, but this is a brand new site entirely. No code from the old site is going to be on the new one. Ooh, that's interesting. Do we have a win here? They're stuck on one land. I could just play the claw and pass, but we have eight mana. So we float these. Dream script cost, or I'm sorry, twiddle cost one. And then, so you think of it this way. Uh, so it's three five seven eight wishclaw talisman gets underworld breach underworld breach back the wishclaw they just countered yeah this is a win all right we'll play the lotus field turn three through a counter spell what up and uh yeah i'm just making the the epic storm fully accessible and i'm really excited about it i've already started developing it parts of the home page are already done which is pretty cool and uh, I don't know. I just thought I'd share that it's not an accident. I am updating the brand. Actually, let's tap this for red first. And now we'll activate the claw. Go get Underworld Breach. We'll now use the Dream Script to untap our Lotus Field. We'll play the Breach. Okay, I believe that we have it, but we have to go through the motions. We'll untap the Lotus Field, escape away some lands, and now we'll tap this for three black. We'll play the Wishclaw Talisman, exile some Mishra's Bobbles and a Twiddle. Activate the Wishclaw Talisman. 
Go grab the Tome Scour, and now we'll scour ourselves, and it's a deterministic win. Our opponent's going to make me go through it, which is absolutely fine. So you've seen the loop at this point. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do this over and over again. So the idea is that you Tome Scour twice, and then you Twiddle. Eventually, you mill your entire deck into Thassa's Oracle. That's the idea. Okay, we've successfully milled our entire library, and now I will Dream Script to untap my Lotus Field. Turn three, through Counterspell, no creatures involved, so cards like Lightning Bolt would never have been relevant. And now we will Dream Script again. I've just been playing a lot of decks on the channel recently, Gift Storm and then the Is It Turbo Breach, and I actually like that deck quite a bit if I'm being honest. But... Those decks all have their own unique flaws in the fact that they're either weak to removal or weak... I guess it's really just weak to removal. This deck is weak against Blood Moon, but I guess you can't beat everything. And not being weak to Orcish Bowmasters or Lightning Bolt or whatever is pretty huge. And we fast as Oracle. Okay, so we have successfully won game number one. Sweet. We definitely want Pact of Negation versus Is It Merc Tide. And then most lists these days are actually playing Magus of the Moon. I believe they're like on a 2-1 split. I'll check MTG Goldfish real quick with the 1 being Blood Moon. Actually, the more recent lists are only on Magus of the Moon. So you don't really need to side in Echoing Truth because you have 4 Is It Charms in your deck. Okay, so we do want Pact of Negation. We're at 63. I'll leave one Pact of Negation in the sideboard for Wish. I don't know if I actually like it, but I don't actually want to take too many cards out in this matchup, so I'm just going to shave on Consider. Good hand. We have to find a Lotus Field, but I like this a lot. Another thing that I really enjoy about Is It Charm, and it kind of makes Wish tolerable, so if you go back to, uh, probably over a year ago at this point, I played a lot of Wish combo with my Lotus Field decks. And I sort of got really sick of this card being stuck in my hand all the time. With Is It Charm, you can filter out spare copies of Wishes and turn them into live cards. So that's always great. Preordain. I think I'm okay with leading on Preordain here. I was going to Otherworldly Gaze, but I'd rather just cast this instead. And we don't need an extra Dream Script. I'll take the Mishra's Bobble because it's a free draw that fills up our graveyard, and we do want to get to 10 cards in the graveyard for this wish. They have a lightning bolt on top of their deck. Not a great draw for them. We find a consider. They fetch basic island. Expressive iteration. Okay. Another thing that wish does for us. Ooh, it looks like uh, my sidebar decided not to load. That's weird. I don't know when that went away, but it's back now. Uh, forgive me for that. Another thing that I like about Wish, though, is that I don't necessarily need to side in the or side in answers for Graveyard Hate because I can always just Wish into Aave Progenitor Ooze. I think I'm going to play the basic, and then let's play Consider. Put the Bloodstained Mire to the Graveyard. Pact of Negation was a good draw, but I still need to find that Lotus Field. We'll play Otherworldly Gaze. I'm going to bin the is it charm the question is do i want the dream script because if i want the ability to win with wish immediately i need another twiddle effect but i think my focus should really just be on finding the lotus field at this point because i might naturally draw an untap effect they attack for one and they're just passing okay we draw another land i could have played otherworldly gaze in my upkeep i'm aware of this it was not an uh, hindsight error for me. It was the fact that our opponent's holding open counterspell. If I cast this on their end step instead, they might tap out and then I could theoretically win the game. Drawing land number five, obviously not good. I'm aware of that. But I'm trying to leave myself with the chance of playing around counter magic. So I'm going to take three here. I go to 14. Their channeler is still not delirious, so I'm not under too much pressure. They have five cards in hand. We'll take one going down to 13 life. On their end step, we will flash back the Otherworldly Gaze, because now if they want to counterspell this, they have to tap out. We'll bin the Otherworldly Gaze. Bin the second Is It Charm. I almost want to keep it, and then we'll keep the Preordain. I'll fetch down to 12. And let's grab a Steam Vents. 
I'm not going to pay life. And then we can just preordain. Underworld Breach and another Dream's Grip. I don't actually need the Breach because I have this Wish. I'll put it on the bottom. Another copy of Otherworldly Gaze. Okay. So we're almost halfway through our... I, I shouldn't say almost halfway. That's not fair. We will be after I cast a pair of Otherworldly Gazes. But right now we're over a third of the way through our deck and we have not found a Lotus Field. We also haven't found a Wish Claw Talisman. They tap out for an expressive iteration. I'm going to use this opportunity to flash back my Otherworldly Gaze. There we go. Okay, so I don't need this Pact. And I don't need the Wish Claw. I do want the Lotus Field. They kept a card on top with the Dragon's Rage Channel or Surveil. And they play a Mishra's Bobble. This is going to give them Delirium. Yeah, not having to be afraid of Magus of the Moon because you have Is it Charm is so nice. And they're just tapped out. I mean, I guess they could play a land in their second main phase. And they missed on a land? Ooh. Keeping on that Surveil might have been a little sketchy. Okay, so we'll float blue red i think i want to keep my basics around and then i will attempt to twiddle my lotus field we'll tap for red again and now we'll play wish grab the sideboard copy of underworld breach and cast it so that is resolved i will now twiddle my lotus field and our graveyard is completely stocked looks like they just want to watch me go through it i mean i'm fine with that okay so we'll untap again yes and then I'll twiddle again just for fun. Just all the mana in the world. Yes. Now I'll play Wish. Paying two more red. Exile Wish Claw Talisman. Is it Charm? Preordain. Storm is seven. We'll now cast the Tome Scour. Tome Scour again. We'll probably remove one of these Is it Charms. And we hit another Tome Scour. I'm going to build in a little bit of dummy protection here. I'm going to always leave one blue floating in case I misclick. I feel like that's, when you have the availability, it's a good thing to do. It just means that you're less likely to mess up and lose. Okay, making our way through. Okay, we have four cards left in our deck at this point. So I still have this otherworldly gaze in my hand. I could escape the Tome Scour, but that takes up three more resources from our graveyard, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll just Otherworldly Gaze and always mill three, and then you could Thassa's Oracle with one card left in your deck. And at this point, you just need to Twiddle twice, and then cast the Wish into Thassa's Oracle. There's one Twiddle. Here's the other Twiddle. I forgot how good it feels to play this deck. It's been so long. My last Lotus Breach video did not do well, if I'm being honest, and I kind of was just like, I'm going to take a break from this deck. Not because I didn't think it was good, it's just people didn't watch, and if you're not interested in watching, I'm not going to record it. So if you want to watch this deck, you have to watch the videos, because, like, for example, I just recorded Popper Walls, worst upload I've had on the channel in over a year, not counting Cube. And I'm not going to upload those videos if people don't watch them, so... That is my philosophy because I actually get punished by the algorithm and my videos after that actually do worse too. So I don't want to continually get punished for recording things you may not like. Anyway, that was match number one. We're now one and all. Hopefully we don't have any more technical difficulties like the sidebar above me disappearing. But uh, yeah, all right. I'll see you in the second match. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. All right, time for the second match. We are on the play. I also noticed that uh, my Mac bar was showing on the screen. I usually have that cropped out. I've taken care of that. So once again, we have a hand where if I find Lotus Field, this hand just goes bananas. Okay, we will keep. I really like the idea that Wish is just a compact win where you have all of the pieces. We'll lead on the Scalding Tarn. You only want to lead on Bloodstained Mire if you know that you're getting a Shock Land because this can't get the Basic Island. Blooming Marsh Pass. So it's either a bad Yawgmoth opener or like Jund. I can't think of another deck that would keep this, but who knows. 
Let's bin the otherworldly gaze, because I can always flash it back. And then we drew another. Perfect. Okay, so this is an ideal spot for us to grab the blood crypt. So I'm going to do that. Ouch. Tap for black. We'll play Wish Claw Talisman. All right, so next turn I can tap the blood crypt and then go get Lotus Field and Dreams Grip the Lotus Field. But I don't have enough mana to win. And it looks like it is Yawgmoth. Uh, even if I drew another Twiddle here, I don't know if we have enough. So I'm going to play the Bobble and then play Polluted Delta. I'm going to target myself so that way I get a Pseudo Scry here. I don't want Preordain, so I'll fetch. And then we'll grab Steam Vents. Pass the turn. I guess I can Otherworldly Gaze and control what we draw and I can still hold open this Is It Charm. Oh, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I guess you could say that our graveyard is going to be full. Um, we'll bin all of these. Wow. That was a lot of visit charms. <laughs> sure. Ten cards in graveyard already. So ideally, we would find Lotus Field the old-fashioned way. Because then this Wishclaw Talisman could be a pact of negation to stop an endurance. We don't actually need this wish anymore because I naturally drew the Underworld Breach. Another Wall of Roots. Okay. They can currently, on our turn, cast Court of Calling for three. That's something for us to think about. On the end step, we will flash back Otherworldly Gaze. They could also hard cast an Endurance. We found the Lotus Field. Okay, so I believe that we can actually beat an Endurance now. Keep. Why have I not been playing this deck? I don't know if I'm just drawing really well, but this feels insane to me. Actually, let's float a... I don't know if it matters. We'll float blue. We'll float red here. Play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice the non-basics. And I'll attempt to untap my Lotus Field. We'll play an Underworld Breach. Do you have Endurance? Orcish Bowmasters do not care whatsoever about that card. You got it. And they do have Endurance. Okay, so we will float blue. Use the Wishclaw Talisman. I will go grab the single copy of Pact of Negation, something you can't do if you're not playing Wishclaw. The green list does not have that capability. Counter your Endurance. Underworld Breach. Why is the sidebar just disappearing over and over? This is not going well for me. This has been a messy stream. Messy recording, I guess I should say. I don't actually stream. Okay, I might need to look into something after this match. Because I don't want the sidebar to just keep on disappearing on me. I swear I'm a semi-professional at this. It's not my day job. As you, I've said throughout this uh, league so far, I'm actually a web developer. But I like to think that I per put out a professional level quality entertainment. And uh, so far it has not been that. And now we'll Tome Scour. Untap the Lotus Field. We'll exile some Is It Charms. How about that? 33 cards left in deck. We can scour again, removing some cantrips. So while I'm going through the motions here, I'd like to point out one thing. If I was on the Is It Breach deck, the one that has Dragon's Rage Channeler and all those red rituals, this Orcish Bowmasters would have been a problem. Just because there's a lot of points in your combo turn where Dragon's Rage Channeler loses Delirium. Never a problem here. Okay, we have successfully emptied our deck at this point. I will untap our Lotus Field, and once again, we just want to play Wish into Thassa's Oracle. Exile some Twiddles, why not? They're white bordered, no one wants to look at that. And then Thassa's Oracle from the sideboard. Still have that Pact of Negation if for some reason we needed it. Okay, we have successfully won game number one. Yawgmoth. I will check out a recent list for this, bring this over here, why not? One Endurance in the main deck is pretty normal. So they just happen to have that. They have more Endurance in the sideboard. A lot of lists actually run a Magus of the Moon in the board as well, but it looks like that's fallen off, at least recently. But we have the Is It Charm, so that's not the end of the world. Force of Vigor. Chalice of the Void. Okay, so in the past, I've really liked bringing in uh, Leyline in this matchup because it hits Thoughtseize and Endurance, but it looks like they're only on two Endurance and two Thoughtseize. So Pact of Negation hits Force of Vigor and Endurance. It doesn't stop Thoughtseize, but Pact of Negation seems like a card I'm interested in here. You probably want Echoing Truth just for the Chalice of the Voids. I'm going to board down two Is It Charm 
One pact of negation can stay in the sideboard, and then two consider. Good hand. Keep basic forest into young wolf. Another twiddle is very good for us. Ideally, we find pact of negation and like a wish or, or a underworld breach. If, I'm actually going to fetch away consider. Right now, I'm set up for almost a turn three win, and I just want to do that. We'll draw a random card. Echoing truth is fine. We'll take one. On their end step, I'll cast an otherworldly gaze. They're fetching. This looks like an Orcage Bowmasters. And it is. Okay, that's resolved. Otherworldly gaze. We don't need any of this. Okay, now we're going to our turn. Another Echoing Truth. That was honestly not a very good draw for us. Alright, so I'm in a shock. I go to 15 and I will play Wishclaw Talisman. Pass the turn. They have land number three. Still four cards in hand. Wall of Roots. And another Orcish Bowmasters. So their Orc army is going to grow here. They have two cards left in hand. So green card plus Endurance or green card plus Force of Vigor are what we're worried about. I'm at 10. Next turn they can attack for 5. I'm going to flashback this Otherworldly Gaze. None of these help. We're going to get rid of all of them. Take a draw. Another Otherworldly Gaze. We'll play the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. This Otherworldly Gaze, you might be saying, oh, it's great because you can cast it in your upkeep. Sort of. Um, if you want to do that, it's actually really awkward. Because you'd have to untap your Lotus Field. So if you want to do that, if that's your line, you need to activate Wishclaw first, Otherworldly Gaze, Twiddle, and then hope to draw well. Is this a Court of Calling? Do you, are you playing the Magus? They're doing it for X equals 3. Magus seems pretty probable here. Endurance. Okay. So now I know I don't have to play around anything. That's nice. Okay. So we don't have to play around a pitch spell. We might be able to get this now. I'm going to take a random draw. Another twiddle is actually perfect. Okay, so we'll untap. And then we will untap again. This is actually pretty cool. A feature of playing a Wishclaw Talisman list. So we're going to activate this Wishclaw holding priority. We'll twiddle the Wishclaw. Untapping it. Yes. And now I'm going to activate Wishclaw Talisman again. We can get Underworld Breach and the Tome Scour here for an easy win. Sweet. So I'm forced to play the Underworld Breach for... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, do our colors not work? I messed up. I had the win and I messed up. So I can play Breach, but then I can't escape. I had the win. I needed to flip my colors different. I punted. There's no avenue to victory here. That's really unfortunate. Okay, game three. Wow. Okay, that's my own fault. I think I just want the Pact of Negation. We'll take out the Izzet Charms. They showed us that they don't have Magus, so I'm not going to keep in any copies of Izzet Charm. Let's just submit this. Game three. Nope. I'm going to be a little bit bummed if I lose this match when I had game two one and my own incompetence cost me, but head up. We're going to just try to play well and win this game. Get rid of the extra twiddle. We just have to find the Lotus Field and having two cantrips is better for that. They kept six cards. Pluto Delta. I'm just going to grab shocks because we know that they don't have Magus. I'm going to bottom the Otherworldly Gaze and keep the Consider because I can cast two cantrips next turn. Pendlehaven. Young Wolf. Another Wish. Kind of stinky. And I boarded out the Is It Charms here. We'll grab the Watery Grave in case I find a Wishclaw Talisman. Consider. That can go to the Graveyard. Land three. We'll just pass. I want them to have to think about like a Lightning Bolt or something. Wall of Roots. Okay. Delighted Halfling, sure. You got it. And now we will Otherworldly Gaze. They still have three cards in their hand. We found a Breach, but Breach doesn't actually... I mean, I have Double Wish in hand, so I don't think the Breach really helps. We'll bottom or mill the Otherworldly Gaze and we'll keep Consider. Let's Consider. I'm considering first because if I find a Wishclaw Talisman, I want to be able to play it. And I did. Okay, so slightly rewarded there. 
play out the wish claw so that gives me access to lotus field but i still can't beat an instant speed green spell at the moment haywire might okay they're gonna use the haywire might they have two cards left they leave back the delighted halfling so they haven't i guess it's not endurance because they could cast endurance without it in our upkeep i'll flash back other really gaze i mean the pact indication was such a good find with the lotus field we'll play the field unless it's hardcast force of vigor okay so they have force of vigor in their hand that actually makes a lot of sense was it endurance the whole time why not get in the extra damage okay so we don't have a win anymore but i can actually set this up over two turns uh they're attacking for six no i can't set it up over two turns anymore i think they might have me so they attack for six i go to five i think i'm dead oh plus the pendle haven yeah and i have a pact indication on top of my deck that doesn't do anything yeah we lost this game because i didn't realize my floating mana situation or this match so i could wish for molten collapse but our opponent has four damage next turn with the pendle haven so that doesn't even matter because if i was thinking about um just wish molten collapse the endurance or if they didn't have lethal you could wish tome scour and that reduces the amount of cards you need in order to win the game but our opponent has lethal so it looks like my blunder in game two cost me this should have been a match win and instead it's a loss we are now one and one Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, a few quick things before we start match number three. One, I have fixed the sidebar. It turns out that when I was resetting it up, I never set it to loop. It is now looping, so we should see it stick around for the rest of the time. Sweet. The second thing is, I haven't played this deck in a while. Obviously, I'm not playing perfect. I kind of threw that last match. I'm not going to let it get to me. I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't played the deck. It's going to happen. So we're going to keep a level head and play tight and uh, just do our best. All right. So on the play, yeah, this hand is amazing. This actually might be a turn three. I love that. So you do need 10 cards in order to win with Wish as your, to do the Wish loop, you need 10. So ideally, we would have a card like Consider or Otherworldly Gaze. We also need another twiddle effect. So we might end up being short on cards, but it's possible. I guess that's my point here. We'll play the Bloodstained Mire, and then we'll just grab a Shock Land. Probably Steam Vents. Amulet Titan, sure. They grab their Growth Chamber. I'm just going to fetch. We'll grab that Steam Vents. Okay. Another land. Not really what we wanted. But maybe we can filter it away using this Is It Charm. We will fetch down to 18, and I'm going to Is It Charm now. We'll grab a basic. We'll do red, blue. Cast the Is It Charm to draw two, discard two. Okay, I believe that is a win. We'll discard the two lands. Turn three. Another land. Red, blue. We'll play Lotus Field. And now we will untap. Tap for blue, play the Underworld Breach, and now we'll untap our Lotus Field. So many lands in the graveyard. They pause there. They might actually have the Besaju, but Besaju's not a card I can really afford to play around here, so I'm just not going to. And they did have it. Okay, so we have the backup Underworld Breach. There was a reason I didn't um, discard this to the Izzet Charm. We'll grab the basic. This untaps. The question is, do I have enough resources to still win? So we have, I just don't want to mess this up. So I want to think through it. I'm not going to have any more mana next turn. So that's a thing to think about here. Um, but I could still wish Tome Scour. So we have seven mana. I believe that this still wins because seven mana is enough to go Tome Scour Twiddle because this is five, Scour six, Twiddle seven. 
all these underworld breaches. And now we will tome scour. Well, I played something right. How about that? I shouldn't jinx it. Like I might actually like misclick and mess this up. But I, I did keep the underworld breach like a genius. And by genius, I mean any competent person. Tom Scour again. We can exile the wish. We have three more in our deck. Scour again. And I'll quit announcing the loop at this point. You don't need to watch me click through my entire deck. We have successfully milled our entire library. How about that? Okay, well, our entire library minus one card. Good enough. We will now Dreams Grip twice and then Wish into Thassa's Oracle. That is our game plan. And now we'll play the Wish. We still have enough to Pact of Negation left over if need be. Sweet. Is it Charm Can? Stay on top, I guess. I don't know. All right, we've taken game number one from Amulet Titan. Another matchup where Pact of Negation ends up being fairly good. This is not a matchup where Is it Charm is amazing, so I'm going to board down on those. And then I think I want one Echoing Truth is a catch-all in case they have something like a relic that they can get off of uh, their Urza Saga. It's not very common anymore, but Echoing Truth can also stop them from killing me, so it's kind of free. Another thing you could do is keep in the Is it Charms for the ability to loot away spare copies of Wish or extra copies of Wish Collect Talisman. But I think if you're going to do that, you have to board out Considers. And is it better to have additional two drops in your deck. I don't know. So I'm going to choose to have a more lean deck, even though there's a chance that my draw ends up being clunky. I really like as a charm though. Like that's a card that's impressed me so far. Okay, so we don't have Underworld Breach and we don't have Lotus Field, but I do like this hand. The ability to cantrip three times in the first two turns, plus already having Pact Negation is quite good. Ooh, we're looking at a double amulet on turn three. I might not get a turn three. Oh, well, there's a wish claw. And we'll preordain. I think I'm supposed to keep one of these. If we want to go fast, I need twiddles. And bottoming two is pretty risky. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Well, they're going to have four amulets. I guess how we win this is if they don't have uh, Karoo land. Well, we have everything we need to win on our turn three now. So we need them to just not have it. We'll grab the Blood Crypt, play Wish Claw, and then just hope that they don't kill me. The fourth Amulet of Vigor. There it is. They had the Simic Growth Chamber the whole time. Extra dead. There's the Primeval Titan. So they had the turn three on the play. Not a whole lot I could have done. What is this? Uh... Create a copy of a target creature you control so they can attack with multiple copies of Primeval Titan. I've never seen this in the deck before, but that is enough to kill me here. So we can just go to the next game. Wow. Okay. Game three. I mean, I had the turn three as well, but they were on the play. So sometimes that happens. We're just going to focus on getting this third game. Sure. I love it. This... Looks like it's likely to be a turn three. Opponent with a mulligan to five. So we're capable of a turn three, but they're also a deck that has endurance and force of vigor. So we need to respect that. And now they're going to four cards. So we should be looking to play a more resilient game rather than trying to turbo. I'm going to lead on a Mishra's Bobble and then another Mishra's Bobble. And then let's look at our top card, see if it's something we even want. I do want an Underworld Breach, so we will play Steam Vents, and I will Preordain. We'll keep both of these on top, and then I'll Bobble them. Slayer Stronghold, okay. I'll draw two, so I'm going to draw the Underworld Breach and then one Unknown card. Pact of Negation was perfect. If I could have chosen a draw, a draw it would have been Lotus Field or Pact of Negation. And now another Twiddle. So this looks like it's going to be a turn three win with Pact of Negation back up. We'll grab this Watery Grave. Play the Wishclaw Talisman. Send it back. Yeah, I don't know why I paused on playing this deck. It just feels amazing. And no disrespect to the people out there playing the One Ring and green cards, but I don't see how that's better than what I'm doing here. Yeah, they're just dead. D-E-D, -E dead. We'll float blue, play Lotus Field. Sacrifice, sacrifice. I mean, technically, we don't have it. Uh, there's a chance I could fizzle, 
but we're going for it. Because we don't have Tome Scour, but I do have Preordain and Consider with a lot of looks. So it looks like that is resolved. I'm going to Twiddle. Okay. And then let's Preordain. We're going to bottom both of these. Otherworldly Gaze. That's very good with our Underworld Breach. Wish. Okay. I need to figure this out. Um... Is it better to spend the mana on Consider or Escape? I think it's better to Consider. No, it's got to be better to Escape. And now I can Consider. And we just hit the Charm Scour. Wow. Love it. Okay. Would you like to respond now? You've been pausing, so you either have it or you don't. Looks like they just want to watch me win. Sure. I have no problem going through the motions. We'll Scour ourselves. Storm is now 9, but Storm is also irrelevant. I guess we have an Ave in our sideboard, but we're not casting Ave. 30 cards left in our deck. Let's not exile the Echoing Truth. There's got to be another card I can exile here. I guess we can get rid of one of the Wishes. Okay, we've successfully milled our entire deck, but then our opponent just conceded. So they just wanted to see our full deck list, I guess. We're 2-1, and one. should be 3-0. But we're just going to, you know, try to win one game at a time and hopefully finish this league with a 4-1. I am really impressed with the deck list we're playing so far. Wow. Um, it just feels a lot better than all the other Storm decks I've been playing. I think Lotus Breach is back. I'm just going to say it. I think that I've been trying to figure it out for a while now, but is it Charm plus Wish is the way? Let's stick around to find out if that's true in match number four. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. I won't lie to you, I kind of want to keep this. It's a 5 lander, which is a lot. Uh, but we have Lotus Field, you have Wish, so you'd have to draw Twiddles, which are... We have 8 of them in our deck. This might be a terrible keep. I'm going to try it. I also feel we're about due to face Rakdos Scam. And if we face Scam, at least we have the Lotus Field. Our opponent has kept six cards. Mishra's Bobble, so not Rakdos Scam. They target themselves. Likely is it Murktide then. And they just play a land and pass. So they'll draw off their Bobble. We draw another Wish. Uh, I don't know if we wanted that, but we'll see what we can do here. Target ourselves, Wishclaw Talisman. I think that is a card worth keeping. We'll play the Scalding Tarn and pass. They grab a basic and preordain. One on top, one on the bottom. So they're choosing to leave open a mana here. I would not be terribly surprised if they have Spell Pierce. But I think we're just going to jam Wishclaw Talisman in disrespect, so... That's what I'm about. We'll grab the Blood Crypt. I should have played the Bloodstained Mire. I didn't think all the way through my turn. Because this Bloodstained Mire only has the two shocks to get. So let's grab an island. And we'll play Wishclaw Talisman. It resolves! You love to see it. Dragon's Rage Channeler. They play a land. Untapped Steam Vents. Good for them because I can't kill you with damage. I guess I could Aave Progenitor Ooze, but that's not likely going to happen here. There's been some discussion that I've had with a friend probably a year and a half ago at this point, where they were like, Brian, I think the Aave Progenitor Ooze in the sideboard should be an Empty the Warrens, because on turn two, granted, you would have to have the Nuts hand, but on turn two, if you went Floatal Blue, play Lotus Field, Twiddle, 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 granted, you play eight Twiddles, We'll then wish into um, Empty the Warrens would be 10 goblins on the second turn. And is that more likely than wish into Ave Progenitor Ooze? Maybe. Um, Ave can win with less Storm, which can sometimes be really nice in our deck. Because we're not really a deck that's that great at making Storm, in my opinion. But the triple green aspect is very difficult. We'll play another Wishclaw Talisman. They have four cards in their hand. I'm going to choose to play the Bloodstained Mire, which might be a coward's move. I could play the, the Lotus Field now, but if for some reason they have a main deck Magus of the Moon, I want the ability to kill it. 
Expressive iteration. Next turn might be our turn that we're going to go for the win then. They find another Dragon's Reach channel. They're actually playing it. Okay. Sure. So assuming that they play a land, we'd have to play around Spell Pierce. And if they don't play a land, the only thing you have to play around is a theoretical one of Force of Negation. So they surveilled on their bobble. They kept the card on top. They're now attacking for three. I'll fall to 15 life. So let's see if they have Force of Negation, I guess. If not, they're definitely dead. We'll grab Steam Vents. They draw a card off of Mishra's Bobble. We draw another Lotus Field. We'll do red, red. I mean, this is our go turn. So I guess I'll play Lotus Field. And now I will activate the Wish Claw. Go grab Twiddle. We will untap the Lotus Field. My concern was if they force a negation to Twiddle, but they didn't. So everything is good. And now we'll play the Underworld Breach. Twiddle our Lotus Field. Yes. Twiddle our Lotus Field. Yes. Tap for three red. Play Wish. But now we cast the Tome Scour. And easy does it. I guess Force and Negation would now be live, but it just seems like our opponent has nothing. I'm just going to use the Wish Claw because I don't think that they have anything. So I would rather just get my value out of that card. Okay, so at this point, I just need to mill my entire deck. We have 28 cards. I know that's not very exciting for you all to watch, and I should probably quit talking so that way my editor will clip this, but I like talking to you all. All right, so escaping again. This time we'll be untapping the Lotus Field. All right, we have eight cards left in our deck. I have to scour a couple more times. You could also theoretically flashback an otherworldly gaze, but the difference doesn't mean anything. Okay, so at this point, our entire deck has been milled. I don't even need to escape the wish because I have one in hand. And now we can just tap for red, play wish, grab that Thassa's Oracle, cast it, and that's the ball game. We have taken game number one from Is It Murktide. Once again, I believe we want our Pact of Negations. I kept one in the sideboard in match one. I'm kind of thinking you just want all of them. I think you're supposed to board out Considers. Yeah, let's try this. How do we feel about triple Lotus Field hands, huh? We'll take a mulligan. This is significantly better. We will keep. And we'll put Mishra's Bobble on the bottom. They play their own copy of Mishra's Bobble and look at my top card. Spire Bluff Canal. Into the old Ragavan. We found Breach. That's good. I'll grab a Watery Grave. And then I'm going to main phase this otherworldly gaze. We will put the Scour to the Graveyard, Dream's Grip on top, Bloodstained Mire on top, because if they attack, Ragavan's going to hit the Bloodstained Mire. We don't actually even need this Wish Claw Talisman, so in an ideal world, they would counterspell the Wish Claw, and then we just go off on turn 3 protected. They choose to attack knowing that I put a card on top. They'll hit my Bloodstained Mire that I did not want. And they're just going to pass here. They have five cards in hand. Let's play a Wish Claw Talisman. Right now we have a turn three win with Pact of Negation back up. Wish Claw just resolves. A little surprised by that. They cast into the fire. That would make more sense. So we did not get a counterspell out of them, unfortunately. Now they'll attack with Ragavan. They still have five cards in their hand. And they hit my Preordain. Not something I wanted to see here. They play Ledger Shredder, and now they'll Preordain. So my hope here, and I understand this might be a little bit of wishful thinking, is that they only have one way to interact with my combo, and then it's an easy win. So one silver lining of them hitting my Preordain, this is an extra card to my graveyard. They put two cards on the bottom with that Preordain. They have not played a land yet this turn, so they could still have a land. They're going to Preordain again. Puts two on the bottom. They find land number three. Okay, it's our time. We'll play a Lotus Field. And let's attempt to untap our Lotus Field. We'll tap for red, play an Underworld Breach. They get the um, Ledger Shredder trigger. 
There's really one card I'm worried about right now, and I'm a big believer in the fact that you're not supposed to say it until, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. So I'll say it in a second. Force Negation, Exile, and Counterspell. I will attempt a Pact of Negation. This actually wasn't the card that I was thinking of, because we could beat this. Underworld Breach. And now I will Dream's Grip, Untapping Lotus Field. All right, so they probably don't have it. So I'll say it now. Fluster Storm was the card that I was really, really nervous about, but it looks like they just didn't have it. Well, now Tome Scour. And that Preordain actually being relevant here. Okay. Untap. We'll scour again. So as I mentioned earlier on in this video, every Thought Scour loop you do, you gain one card. And a Thought Scour loop is two Thought Scours plus one Twiddle. Untap. Sorry, I thought that maybe I clicked on Tome Scour there, so I undid just to make sure that I don't punt. I mean, I've already thrown one match so far this league. I'd like to avoid throwing any more. Okay, so I've gotten to the point where we are down to just two cards left in our deck. So I believe at this point we can just wish into Thassa's Oracle. And then if they want to try to get cheeky, we can just Pact of Negation. By getting cheeky, I mean playing uh, a Pact of Negation. Or a, I guess what I'm saying is if they try to kill Thassa's Oracle, we can Pact it. That is what I'm attempting to say here. And now we'll click on the Thassa's Oracle. And if they had a Lightning Bolt, it does not matter. Okay, so that brings us up to three and one. This deck feels so good. This was another turn three with Counterspell Backup. Wow. All right, match five coming up in just a moment. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match, we're on the draw, no Lotus Field, and we have four lands. I want to keep this, but I think it's supposed to be a mulligan. Significantly better. Okay, we're going to bottom the extra copy of Lotus Field and then just, you know, see what we can do. In my head, this should be a turn three win. Forest, Suspense, Crashing Footfall. So we're facing Rhinos. We might want to find a way to Pact of Negation. So we want to find Wishclaw Talisman most likely. I'm going to keep both of these because Rhinos is a Force of Negation deck. So we'd have to get pretty lucky with them not having anything. So we're going to draw the second Twiddle here. Another option is that we just Wish and then play Underworld Breach and try to use the Wish as our Pact of Negation. All right, land number three, not ideal. I would have preferred a spell there, but I do like the fact that it's a fetch land, so at least we get a card in the graveyard. They play a Misty Rainforest. They have four cards in their hand. Is this a Violent Outburst? It looks like they're going to cast Violent Outburst. Sure thing. A pair of subtleties go on the bottom. I would have liked to have seen two Force and Negations go on the bottom. But beggars can't be choosers. Okay, so they have three cards in their hand. We ripped Pact of Negation. Wow. That was so good. Okay. We drew the singleton. I'll take it. And we will attempt to untap our Lotus Field. Twiddle again. Another protected turn three win. I mean, I've been hyping this deck up this league, but this feels so nuts compared... Like, after I've been playing Gift Storm in the Is It Breach deck, like, this deck... Feels legit. Like, I would play this in a big event if I was running this well. Holy moly. The only thing holding this deck back was me. Which is kind of a common problem in my uh, videos, but don't judge me. We will scour ourselves. Okay, so at this point, I just have to go through the motions. You don't need to watch me do this. Okay, we have successfully milled our entire library at this point. I'm going to untap our Lotus Field. We can exile Underworld Breach. We don't need Tom Scours anymore. Well, Dream Script again. So I think the only thing that I'm ultimately concerned with here is if somehow our opponent had double subtlety in their hand. And I'm not sure if I can beat that. 
So this brings me up to seven mana, which is just short of being able to win or being able to double pact. I don't think it's a luxury that I have. So if they have double subtlety, they have it. But I don't know. Well, they didn't have it. And I still had the pact negation. I was just curious if I could find a way to still win. So right, we've taken game number one. Definitely want the Pact Negations. Every single round I've said that today, but we've just faced a lot of decks where Pact Negation ends up being good. If we had faced Rakdos Scam, for example, we wouldn't have boarded in Pact Negation. Burn either. Um, Tron. There's a lot of decks where Pact Negation doesn't come in. It's just the way that today's lined up, Pact of Negation has been an all-star. I think I like Echoing Truth in this matchup because it not only does it answer Rhinos, it also answers Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon. So we'll bring those in. And then we need one more cut. I think Wish ends up being kind of expensive in this matchup, so I'm willing to shave one Wish. Okay. We'll keep. I used to play with Foil Twiddles, if you go and watch some older videos uh, that I've recorded with this deck. This is actually my signature modern deck here on the channel. And I used to own Foil Twiddles, but at some point I sold my entire Magic Online collection thanks to being sponsored by Card Hoarder. And Card Hoarder gives me enough tickets where... I don't need to own a Magic Online collection, so my account's actually just, uh, it is 150 basic lands. So I don't own foil twiddles anymore, and you can't rent foils. Fun fact. So white border twiddles are the only thing that's available online. Same thing with Merchant Scroll. After this uh, league is over, I might end up recording a High Tide video, and in there you'll see white border Merchant Scrolls. No second land. Or do you just want to play it in your second main phase? Okay. We'll play the basic and then otherworldly gaze. I love this. Do we'll put the is it charm to the graveyard? I'm unsure about the third twiddle, but I think I want it. So I'm going to play the blood crypt, wish claw talisman, and then we'll pass the turn. They're searching with their misty rainforest and they grab stomping ground. They cycle a Lorien Revealed. Okay. So they that was that must have been their draw step. And now they found land number two. So Blood Moon is a possibility next turn. We're going to hold open Is It Charm. And then we draw the Twiddle that we knew was there. No third land for the opponent. We will fetch. Grab a Steam Vents. And then we will flash back Otherworldly Gaze. And we found Underworld Breach. So that means that this Wishclaw Talisman can be on Pact of Negation duty. We do have to worry about Besaju. Or I could just pass. Like, I don't have to go here. I think I might actually do that. Because I have Blood Moon covered. I have Is It Charm in hand. I'm not, I'm not forced to go off. Um, and do I really need to play around that? Sure, you can ice my Steam Vents. They found their third land. And they grab a basic. So if it's Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon here, do not care. Shardless Agent. And it's just Rhinos. So now I don't even have to respect them having spells that aren't free. On their end step, let's flash back Otherworldly Gaze. This is perfect. Okay, so now we have double Pact of Negation back up. Yeah, is it Charm just allowing you to play more patiently is so nice. You saw that in the first match too, where... I could have gone off, but I chose to wait, and this is the same situation. I guess I can tap one of these for a blue. We'll play Lotus Field. And then we'll twiddle the Lotus Field. Yes. And now I will twiddle again. Yes. Underworld Breach. And theoretically, we have triple counter backup, because I could use the Is It Charm to counter a Force of Negation or a Force of Vigor. And I will counterspell the Force of Negation. Underworld Breach. They force a negation exiling Mystical Dispute. I will Pact of Negation. And Underworld Breach. So they have one card in hand. It can't be an Endurance. It can't be a Force of Vigor. We just have this. Okay, I guess I'll just use the Wishclaw Talisman to go get our Tome Scour. It's the easiest way forward. Tap for blue. Tome Scour. Tome Scour. And the only thing holding me back here is myself, so I just need to not misclick. 
and our opponent has conceded the game halfway through milling my library. We got the 4-1, with the only match being because, well, I messed up. I'm sorry, this could have been a 5-0. I understand that. But this was really exciting. Um, Is it Charm was an all-star, in my opinion. This deck list felt so good. You don't need the one ring. I mean that. You don't need it. In fact, I think one ring makes this deck a lot worse because you're forced to play a bunch more lands, you're weak to Orcish Bowmasters, and... It just really makes the deck feel clunky. And then against some of the bigger decks like Tron, Karn the Great Creator just houses you. Where with Wishclaw Talisman, it gets underneath Karn a lot of the time. But on top of that, you can win without using Wishclaw Talisman. And Wish really impressed me as well. So I would keep this deck list 74 of 75 the same. I think you could start to think about should Ave Progenitor ooze be an empty the Warrens? But that's the only change I would make. If you have any other suggestions, feel free to put those down below. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I really mean that. I'm sorry for the technical errors that we had with the sidebar not looping. And, well, my kind of poor play in match number two. But I'm not perfect. This is the first time that I've played this deck in four months, maybe five. And then before that was also a couple months break. So uh, I'm coming back. And, you know, well, actually, that's not true. I've played the versions with the One Ring more recently. But, you know, a, a build like this with Wish in it and stuff like that, it's been a while. Um, that's what I was trying to say there. But really, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all of your support. And just so you know, there will be a sideboard guide. If you scroll down, there will be uh, an Epic Storm mini token pack for sale. We now have a Shopify site that's connected to our YouTube channel. But more importantly, I mean, you should definitely buy a mini token pack. I mean, support us, blah, 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 uh, all that shenanigans. But really, there's also sideboard guides in there. So if you're interested in a cyborg guide for this deck, you can click and buy it through Shopify. Alternatively, you can go to theepicsworm.com slash shop and save us each a little bit of money. I save on Shopify, Shopify fees and you should save a little bit on, you know, the cost because it's a little bit more through Shopify. But anyway, you can go to theepicsworm.com slash shop or just click the link down below. Your choice, it doesn't matter. And uh, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm kind of rambling at this point, so I'm gonna end the video. So have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Bryant Cook, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. There's no better way to support our channel. If you're interested in elevating your combo game, visit theepicstorm.com slash tutoring for details about our coaching sessions. Don't worry, there's more great combo content coming right up.